Welcome to this Learn the Electrics video, the 8th in our 18th edition exam help series. If you are studying for the exam or maybe just wanting to update your knowledge, we are sure that you will find this video both interesting and helpful. Part 1 of BS 7671 2018 is about the scope, object and fundamental principles of the wiring regulations. Many people skip over this section, but it is actually quite important in setting the scene for electrical installation work and expect at least four exam questions on this section. So what is scope, object and fundamental principles? Chapter 11 is about the scope or limits. It tells us what is and what is not covered by the regulations. Chapter 12 is the object and effects. It explains the purpose or object of the regulations. It states the fact that the wiring regulations contain rules to be applied to electrical installations. And fundamental principles is chapter 13. It talks about what requirements need to be satisfied in order to be certain that an installation will ensure the safety of persons and livestock and will protect property from danger and damage. We can look now at chapter 11, scope, and the type of exam questions to expect. This chapter is mostly about what type of installations are included in the regulations and just as importantly what installations are not included. And you will see these two sections on pages 15 and 16. You will definitely have questions on these sections. They are always included in the exam questions so get to know pages 15 and 16. And please read the question carefully. Sometimes they will ask what is not included, but your eyes will skip over the word not, you will miss it, and you end up choosing the wrong answer. Here's a typical question. BS 7671 wiring regulations do not apply to which type of installation? And your choice of answers is solar photovoltaic PV power supply systems, extra low voltage lighting, caravans and motor caravans and systems for distribution of electricity to the public. This is a not question. So looking on page 16 we find regulation 110.2 exclusions from the scope. Scanning down the list we find answer D systems for distribution of electricity to the public. There's your answer. And the other three questions are all included in the scope of the regulations on page 15. Staying in chapter 11, scope, look at regulation 114 on page 16. Relationship with statutory regulations. Statutory regulations are a must do. They are part of legislation that can be enforced in law. If a statutory document says you must do this, then you must do it. It is enforceable. On the other hand, a non-statutory document is not enforceable in law. The first line of regulation 114.1 tells us the regulations are non-statutory. And this often comes up as an exam question. Just because it says wiring regulations does not mean that they are automatically statutory. They are non-statutory and a code of working practice that we should all abide by. Then it goes on to say, they may however be used in a court of law in evidence. Why is this? It's because they've been written in such a way that by complying with the non-statutory wiring regulations, you will automatically comply with the Electricity at Work Regulations and the Health and Safety at Work Act, which are both enforceable statutory documents. Staying with this same regulation, the second paragraph of 114.1 contains more information that is popular for exam questions. It mentions the electricity safety, quality and continuity regulations and these are often abbreviated to ESQCR. And this paragraph also states that the connection with the earth and neutral shall be permanent, which is why we say that the earth and neutral are the same point electrically, they are connected together back at the transformer. Move on now to chapter 12, Object and Effects, to be found on page 17. This is a very short section 
and answers the question, what is the purpose of the wiring regulations? It tells us where in the book to find the rules for the design, erection and verification of electrical installations in order to ensure that the installation is safe and the installation functions as intended. It does not go into detail, it just tells us that the rules will be found in chapters 3 to 7. Chapter 13 starts on page 17 and is about the fundamental principles. There are five regulations under this heading which are brief overviews of the general requirements and are often used as exam questions. It will be advantageous for you to look through these at least once. They cover protection for safety, the designer's responsibilities, they talk briefly about selecting equipment, and then erection of the installation and the verification of it. And lastly, a one-liner on periodic inspection and testing. If you look at these, Regulation 131.1 gives us a list of the risks that might exist, and exam setters love lists. On page 18, we find two very important regulations, again often asked as exam questions, because if you don't know the difference, then you're not going to be able to answer the question confidently. They cover basic protection and fault protection. Take a close look at regulation 131.2.1. Basic protection stops a person from getting an electric shock in normal fault-free conditions. The regulation states that this can be achieved by preventing a current from passing through the body of a person or livestock or limiting the current which can pass through a body to a non-hazardous value. Note, there is nothing wrong with the electrical installation. For example, turning the light on or off should not give an electric shock because basic protection is provided by the switch cover. In this case, you can't touch the electric parts. Now look at 131.2.2. Fault protection should protect a person from the dangers of contact with exposed conductive parts during a fault. It is telling us that there is something wrong with the installation. For example, a loose energised wire touches the metal casing of the cooker and protection can be achieved by preventing a current resulting from a fault from passing through a body, limiting the current from a fault to a non-hazardous value, or limiting the duration of fault current to a non-hazardous time period. And this slide compares the two. Basic protection is on the left, and compare this to fault protection on the right. All the sentences on the right use the word fault. In the exam, a question on fault protection will require an answer using the word fault. You must know the difference, an easy exam mark to gain or lose. Take the time to read section 132. It contains lists, examiner's favourites. In this section, you're looking to word match almost exactly with what is in the book. 132.2 is an important list the designers must consider. And look at 132.6 on cross-sectional area of conductors. The correct sizing of cables on site is very important, so expect a question on this. Session 133 on page 21 talks about British and harmonised standards and what to do if there is no standard for the equipment you are installing. What about voltage and power requirements for the intended equipment? And what do we do? If a new thing is invented after the regulations book is printed, can we use it? Section 134 gives advice for erection and verification of the installation. Simple but essential requirements, but again without going into detail. Seven short sentences that frequently make up exam questions. Take the time to know where they are. And lastly, section 135 that very simply says that installations should be periodically inspected and tested during their lifetime. And that is part one of the wiring regulations. Let's look at a few questions now. As usual, we will begin with the answers to the last session on the testing section of the regulations. The correct answers to the four questions are as shown in this list, and hopefully 
you got all four correct. And now, the questions for this week. Question one is about chapter 11. Choose the only correct answer from the four choices. Question two is on chapter 12 and is an easily found answer. And question three is to do with chapter 13. Answers, as usual, in the next exam tips session. Well, that's it. We hope that you found this video from Learn the Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you've increased your electrical knowledge. Please click on subscribe below. It will give you access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you'll also ensure that you don't miss our next video. By clicking on subscribe, you'll help us too and we do appreciate that small act. Also, typing in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar will give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.